Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Arsenal. We actually played the game today. Yes, we are going to be talking about that and also the latest transfer news. We are now around um, maybe 15 days, just over two weeks um, to go before the transfer window shuts and we are down to the players that we have and now focus on the football. But still, we are still trying to, uh, to bring in a couple of more players and obviously after Timber's injury, we are still trying to sign a couple of more players. But let's talk about today's game. We actually played against Luton Town and we won the game by three goals to nil. I mean, we are definitely going to win the Premier League, right? <laughs> uh, I mean... I mean, no, I'm actually, I'm actually serious. I actually predicted us all to win the Premier League, so I'm not joking. But um, yes, we did beat Luton Town 3 0 today. Surprising that we actually played um, a club league behind closed doors friendly match in the middle of the season. But I guess I kind of know why. A couple of reasons. Uh, one, we didn't have a game like between Saturday and our next game is next Monday, so we had a gap of like nine days. So just to um, keep the players fit and everything, that could be a reason. And number two, a chance to uh, play the likes of. Um, the new players and also the players who are coming back from injury and that is what we saw today we've not seen the highlights of the game yet or anything but we know that Zinchenko played today um he's coming back from an injury we know that Chris Nelson played today as well he's coming back from an injury too um David Dre made his Arsenal debut um, an official debut but um we also got to look at him for around 60 minutes as well so mainly the players who are coming back from injury and um actually the goal scorers Trossa did score a goal and also um Trossard scored twice and Bukayo Saka scored once, as always. Like Saka always scores. It's a behind closed doors friendly, whatever it is. But those three players, those two players scored the goals, and uh, we saw a bit of Zinchenko, a bit of Ray, a bit of uh, Rhys Nelson as well. So that's um, that's decent. Um, hopefully, no other injuries. Usually, Arsenal can pick up injuries even a behind closed doors friendly. Um, so for us, also playing that game against Luton, Luton themselves don't have a game this weekend because it has been postponed. So I guess even for them, they wanted to just keep fit too. So uh, probably let's see if you're going to get the highlights or anything and see whether you're going to see the goals and stuff like that. But we did play against Luton and won the game 3-0. So let's talk about the transfers. That is the game, but let's focus on the transfers today. A lot of news on Nuno Tavares. What's the latest on him? We know he's going to be sold, but how much are we going to get for him and why is he going to end up at? Um, according to reports from Fabrizio Romano, Nottingham Forest submit formal proposal to sign Arsenal left back. No, not advised on a permanent deal. Forest trying um top signing as new fullback as negotiate. Forest trying top signing as new fullback as negotiations are still um ongoing. Also on players side, the deal is on. That is what Fabrizio Romano um confirmed earlier today. But which team, which kind of price are we try? Are we are we are we looking at? According to John Cross Mirror. West Ham and Nottingham Forest are both interested in signing Nuno Tavares. Nottingham Forest are hoping to sign the Portuguese in a 30 million deal. 30 million. Oh my goodness, 30 million. Absolutely, yes. 30 million. That would be absolutely amazing. Like, yes, other teams are able to get 50, 60 million, but this is a player we are really like hoping for 15 to 20. So if you can get 30 million, there's actually been even other quotes saying that you could get up to 40 million. That would be crazy. Now, listen, let's not tell them that. I mean, no matter why he's a very good player, they should be even giving us 60 million, but we'll take 30 million, you know. But let's let's agree on 30 million. We will definitely agree on 30 million. You know, that, that would be good money that uh, we can use elsewhere. Obviously, after the team by injury, those rumors about potentially um TN staying, potentially Tavares staying. But I guess that hasn't changed. Looks like Tavares will leave and looks like TN will leave. Um, that will mean probably we're going to get another defender, but let's wait and see what happens with that one. And also, according to um Mr. Dom Smith of the standard, Arsenal have entered talks with Nottingham Forest as they try to offload Nuno Tavares. Western and Galatasaray both showed interest in Tavares last month Arsenal are thought to want around 22 million if they sell him outright so if we can get a bidding or end up getting that 30 million that John Cross of the Mirror has reported that would be great now another good thing about this one and also the Balagan deals and um, transfers and stuff it's actually good to see teams wanting these players you know I remember back in the day when you're trying to sell Mikateri and only Roma wanted him we tried to sell Mustafi and Socrates no teams wanted them we ended up cancelling the contracts it was disastrous like at least right now a player like Tavares, the other day we were, uh, we were told that uh, Wolfsburg and Werder Bremen wanted him um, in Germany. Uh, West Ham want him in the Premier League. Nottingham Forest want him. We've had a couple of um, the likes of Marseille want him as well in France. So it's good to have a few teams um, being targeted. So not all of the teams want to actually pay the money, but at least um, if you can get like a bidding or at least um, some interest in those teams, that shows um, other teams that are coming in for him. Like, hey, we can tell them, listen, other teams also want this player. Other teams are interested. So we need like 30 million for him at least. So 
I think that also benefits us. But that's a little on the note of right. Let's see how um, how this one develops. Um, I don't think he's going to be at Arsenal at all. Obviously, he's not been part of our team for more than a year now and i don't think he's going to be part of our team anytime soon but if Tavares leaves if tini leave uh leaves as well and timba is injured and tomias can get injured anytime saliba is 80 percent fit we have to do something with that defense all of a sudden that team injury has definitely like thrown us um thrown all the plans out of the window pretty much like this is a guy who could play left back right back center back and now you're basically missing two players without timber you're pretty much uh, missing two players so we need some replacements one of the targets um from today is benjamin pavard of um bayern munich um, according to Fabrizio, Benjamin Pavard could become an option for Arsenal to replace Timber. Um, I still remember Benjamin Pavard's goal from the World Cup. If I'm not wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he won the goal of the tournament in the 2018 World Cup. I'm not 100% sure, but I think he scored a fantastic goal. Is it against? I can't remember which team he scored against. I don't know if it was Argentina or something. Did Argentina play in the 2018 and also in the 22 uh, World Cup as well? Could be. But I remember him scoring a bang of a goal from outside the box. And I think it won goal of the tournament. So he's capable of uh, doing things going forward. And also Bayern Munich has played right back. He's played left back as well. I think last time I watched him picking up a red card or something in the Champions League. But he's a very capable player. Um, slightly older than the players um, we have in the team, 19, 20, 21 years of age. But it's also decent to get a bit of... Um, experience in the team and i wouldn't mind him to be honest like if he's going to do the job for us and can play in a couple of positions i wouldn't mind him but um he's also being into a couple of other teams including man united man united also want him um as well but he's not the only defender we are linked to there's also um semicon from um leipzig according to reports it's um from ed arons of the guardian it remains to be seen whether arsenal are rekindled their interest in rb leipzig defender mohammed semicon following julian timbers injuries Simakan could cost in excess of 35 million. That will be the problem, man. You know, we've already spent the money that we like we needed to spend on the players that, that I wanted and they do wanted. I do delivered it. Uh, we wanted Harvard, we paid. We wanted Dryce, we paid. In terms of defense, we wanted Timber, we paid for him. So all of a sudden, if we get an injury like that, you all have a sudden have, all of a sudden have to go back into the market and start trying to get other players. And that's the value, 35, 40 million. We were even lucky that we could actually get um Julian Timber for 38 million. That was a steal. 38 million is like a very cheap um deal uh, for Julian Timber. But now we have to look at it like you know what, Julian Timber next season. Like you're not going to have him this season. So you have to try and find someone for this season. Simekan could be the guy, but the problem is, are we going to pay that kind of money for him? Um, which other plans are this? Um like basically, if you had other plans of like getting a striker and now our defenders are out, uh, now will they go back and use that money they're supposed to use for a forward player to get a defender in? We don't know what the plan is. We don't know how, how many players you're going to get. I think we're definitely going to get a player before the end of the transfer window. I don't know how many, one or two. I definitely don't know which position. We've been linked to a lot of fullbacks and defenders. We've been linked to a few wingers and a few attacking midfielders. I literally do not know. Obviously, we could end up buying one and um, getting another loan deal or something like a David dryer but let's see what happens with that one but Simekan and also Pavard are on the list um one that I'll definitely want but I think would cost a lot of money uh, is uh, to buy Leverkusen obviously Aston Villa got the Abbey from there I would 100% want um Fring Pong from there like he goes forward so many times he scores goals and gets assists for Leverkusen almost every single day um he's only 23 years of age that is the kind of defender I'd want from Germany but any of those guys, him, Simekan, even Pavard, whichever we can get from Germany, just someone to come and help us for this season. And maybe, who knows, they might come and maybe become even better than Timber. Who knows? But definitely need someone there because I'm worried about the injuries and um, uh, Tini potentially leaving. Even if he stays, Tini, you never sure if he can play five to ten games in a row. That is a problem. So we definitely have a problem in terms of defenders. But that's the latest on the defenders. What about the forward players? Um, let's go back to another player who we've been linked to today. We are going to talk about Ansu Fati. I've not talked about him at all, uh, but according to reports um, from Adrian Sanchez. Arsenal and Tottenham have approached Georgia Mendes to inform him that they are willing to offer Ansu Fati a long-term contract and to negotiate with Barcelona for his signature. First of all, a couple of things. This George Mendes guy, how many clients does he have? Every time I look at a player or a player is being linked to Arsenal or to any other team, it's always George Mendes who's um who's the agent of this Portuguese and Spanish players. It's crazy how many um agents he has. Our um agents, that's not the word I'm looking for. 
clients how many clients he has like he has so many clients uh george mendez and ansufat is one of them and george mendez is one of those tough people to negotiate with like he used to be um cristiano ronaldo's um agent he also used to be um i, I don't know if he's still jose Mourinho's agent like he's very good at this um kind of job but if it's arsenal and tottenham as well come on ansufat that's an easy decision right it's going to definitely be arsenal Arsenal should be the team that you're joining uh but now the other problem would be the money. Hans Fatia said that he wants to leave um, Barcelona, um, so that is a good thing. Maybe any other Spanish team comes in for him, he'd want to stay there or something, but um, I'm sure he'd want the challenge of coming to the Premier League. Um, he can't play as a, he used to play as a striker back in the day, and um, that's why he started, but he can also play on the left wing, he can play on the right wing, he can play as an attacking midfielder, so several positions, and almost every single one of our players can do that these days, like Harvard, Strasbourg, Saka, uh, Ben White, Tim, like, yeah, so many players who can play different positions, so I think that is a need these days, like, um, you have to have to, uh, to play, like, three or four different positions to to be signed by so to be signed by many Premier League teams. So Ansu Fat, let's see how this one develops. Obviously, fits into the age bracket of the players you're looking for. Is only like 22. Um, his playing style as well, I think, coming from Barcelona, that helps because uh, we kind of play that kind of football as well. That um, attacking, attacking football. So let's see how this one develops. But Ansu Fati back on the list. Um, Kudus, unfortunately, looks like he's going to go to like a West Ham or something from what I'm hearing from a few minutes ago. Let's see what happens. Uh, but Ansu Fati would also be a um, good signing. Last season, I think he played almost 38 games, but the previous season he only played like 10 or something, I think, because of an injury. But let's see. One player who's definitely not going to be here is a runner son. Um, according to reports, um, Arsenal and Cardiff City have agreed a season-long loan um, for Alex Runnison. I don't know. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we're going to um, like sell this player in his time soon. I'd love to just sell him and just move on from him, get even if it's three, four million and just move on from him. But it's another loan deal because then I can never see him um, coming back to play for us. So that is the problem. But um, loan deal is what you're talking about uh, with Cardiff. But let's see um, if he goes out um, on loan there. All the best to him. And um, what about following Balogun? Unfortunately, this is another one that looks like he's definitely going to leave the club. According to reports from T News and ticks. Tottenham have made an inquiry for following Balogun. However, Arsenal quoted a fee significantly higher than what they have been quoting other clubs for the player. So <laughs> basically, whatever we told Monaco and West Ham and Inter Milan, um, what we needed for Balogun, we've told Tottenham a different price, you know, because it's Tottenham. Like there's like a 20 million tax on Tottenham. Like you can't give Tottenham a player for 30 million. Like all of a sudden, if a player is going to be sold for 100, if he's going to Tottenham, you're going to sell them 150 million. But um, let me ask you guys, would you sell Balogun to Tottenham if they gave us like 60 million? Would you sell, sell him to them? Or are you like, hell no, we'll never sell a player to um, Tottenham. Personally, I'm kind of 50-50. There's a part of me that feels, oh, what about if he goes and he's the ground running at um, Tottenham and he becomes like the next hurricane for them. We don't want to help them out. But then again, I'm like, Balagan is not like on the list of my favorite players. Like uh, if I don't want him to go here or there, I don't really look at it like that. But let's see how this one uh, works out. And also according to... Um, Simon Jones of the Mail, Fulham are considering a move for Arsenal's 50 million rated striker following Balogun as they prepare to sell Mitrovic to Al Hilal. So they, they'll get the money. Um, if Mitrovic is going to um, Saudi Arabia, they'll probably get the money. But then again, as I mentioned, Ali Tavares, Balogun is another player who's being wanted by a lot of teams. Inter Milan, Monaco, Fulham, West Ham. Um, we've had about Tottenham now. So that is a good thing. At least we, um, if they can get a bidding war going, someone pay, someone surely is going to pay 40 to 50 million and going to get this one done. But let's see. But I don't think it's going to be a task. So like um, in terms of order, I think if you're to ask at right now, it's saying Ket is ahead of him, Harvard is ahead of him, Trossard is ahead of him in, in that particular position. So let's see what happens with that one. But we're expecting a lot of movements as confirmed uh, by James Benj. You said Arsenal are focused on trimming back a first team squad that's currently in numbers um, 32. Um, should they bring in enough in, uh, enough sales? Uh, should they bring in enough sales? They would also be an appetite to strengthen the attack if the right opportunity emerged. So there's still a lot of players who are here that you're trying to sell. Remember, Tavares is still here, Lekong is still here, Cedric is still here, Holding, Pepe, Balogun, players you're trying to sell like Tin, like a lot of players are still here. You can mention Eleni as well on that list. Like there's a lot of players we're still trying to sell. The goalkeepers, Ranason, Okonko, um, Carl Heinz. So still a lot of movement to be made. Obviously, in the next one week, uh, especially one week, I think you're going to hear about a lot of um, outgoings um, from Arsenal. Hopefully, you can 
build up, like get a bit of money. We got a bit on, for Pablo Marin, a bit for Austin Trusty, but that's not really enough to get the 35 million, 40 million pound players we're being linked to. But um, that's the latest. Um, Arsenal won um, 3-0 earlier today against Luton, and that's the latest on Tavares, um, on Benjamin Pavard, on Semekan, on Balagan, and Sufati, Ranason, and Arsenal situation in terms of outgoings. Let me know what you make about all that. Thank you for watching. I'll catch up with you guys on the